Hello and welcome. My name is Kia and I'm coming to you from Sweden in a small village outside of Gothenburg. Uh, this is my podcast, my channel here on YouTube where I share with you my crafty life. Uh, I'm a knitter, a spinner and uh, sometimes other crafts as well. Uh, this is the April episode and I am out in my greenhouse again and that feels amazing. I know I have been saying every episode since January that now we are heading towards spring but can we agree on that spring is finally here now? That would be amazing. <laughs> we have uh, the wi wild anemones, I think you call them, the white, uh, the white flowers on the ground, woodland uh, flowers. Uh, we have the daffodils, we have uh, foschitia, we have green shades on the trees now and yeah sun is out and life is good <laughs> uh, yeah it, it's it's nice when we finally get to the warmer months on social media i am kiasbod underscore podcast on instagram on ravelry and also uh, i have a website kiasbod.se uh, i will put up this video with links to everything i talk about today I'm also on Patreon and on Coffee if you would like to support my work with this channel. Uh, right now I'm not very active on Patreon but there is always uh, my old patterns there for you uh, for free if you decide to join me on Patreon. And uh, when I get the energy and the inspiration I will absolutely post something on Patreon. But I, I am in a phase in my life when I am trying to not be so active on social medias. I'm super happy that I am still here on YouTube and uh, I have started to podcast with a Swedish friend. So we podcast in Swedish only and I do this in Swedish and English myself. So that's the, that's the plan for now. We have to not push ourselves too much, I think. Just... Uh, follow the instincts on what feels comfortable right now. Yes, today I have finished objects, I have new cast-ons and also both cast on them finished and the spinning both on uh, the wheel and on my spindles. So let's just start with what am I wearing today and uh, I know uh, I I told you in, in the episode with my Swedish friend, but I haven't talked about this um, this sweater here in the English episode. So this one is both casted on and casted off since I talked to you the last time. Uh, and it is the Anker sweater by Petit Knit. And uh, yeah, let's stand up and show you. It's not, it's not cropped, it's not long, it's just, I think it's a good length, both for uh, trousers and for dresses. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy with it. And uh, the sleeves got a little bit long for my taste. It's not long, I'm, I know it's not long, but for my taste, it's a little bit long. So I am folding it up one just one step here and this is a more comfortable length for me but I think it stretched out a little bit in when I blocked it so added two three centimeters that just gave me a little bit too much much length uh, I followed the pattern on the yoke and then I have done uh, decreases on the sleeves for my taste I like uh, slim sleeves and also no no uh, shaping on the body, just straight body and uh, I don't know about the pattern, but I did straight pattern, a straight, straight body. And yeah, I'm happy with it. It's, it's a nice, nice uh, fit of this garment. I bought this pattern, I think five years ago or something, and I have been knitting a lot of uh, anchor sweaters, both for me and for gifts and for my grandchildren. And uh, I noticed this time that she has done changes in, uh, in the pattern. It's not so wide in the neckline and that's good. So we start off uh, 
with less stitches up here. And then she has done more uh, increases in, in the yoke instead. So there has been some, uh, some changes, but this is, this is also, a good, I like that uh, the neckline is not too wide. And uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure, perhaps she could have uh, kept the old, uh, the old schedule of, uh, what do you call, it? increases in the yoke. But this is, this is fine, it's fine. I have a dress with short sleeves under here, so it's, uh, perhaps it's a little bit bulk, bulky up here on the overarms. The yarn I have used is my hand spun and this autumn I was joining my friend Emma's uh, fiber club and she has, uh, the theme was the mythology of heaven and this was uh, the colorway phoenix and it's, it's a merino silk and it's so 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 lovely, very very soft and I have other other garments that I have been knitted in this combination of fiber and they are really nice. They are not 100% wool, they have the silk content and that gives them a little bit less warmth which is perfect now this uh, season. So I'm looking forward to, to having this now for April and perhaps beginning of May and then it usually turns warmer but we shall see. So, uh, I had two, two um, what do you call it, plates of 200 grams. So I had 400 grams of the fiber and I fractal spun them. So one, uh, one plate was spun on one bobbin and the other was uh, divided in, I think, four and spun on the second bobbin. And then I applied them together to get the color shiftings in the yarn. And yeah, this is the result. I only used up 310 grams for this sweater. And that's, that's not very much. I still have a bump here. Not sure what to do. I have some leftovers from other sweaters as well that I have been uh, knitted in this combination. So there might be a, a mix with all the leftovers later on. But yeah, I'm super happy with this and 310 grams, that's nothing. It's, and it's long, really long sleeves and a good, good length of the body and it doesn't feel like I have been, you know, shorting in somewhere just to, to get it, uh, just to get the yarn to last for the whole project. It feels like I, I have been making all the right sizes, so that's really nice. So that's both casted on and casted off since since March. I think I started it the 31st of March. So I usually now try to start a project every first every month. <laughs> but this one I couldn't wait. So I started it the last of March and uh, and I finished it yesterday. Yesterday morning I binded off the last sleeve and then it took a bath and dried yesterday and now I can wear it today. So that's really good. So like 17 days for, for this sweater, knitted on 4 millimeter needles. Really, really nice. But we also have the time for, for the spinning, of course. But that's only a bonus. That's, that's just fun. So really nice. And this feels so, so good to knit up uh, a sweater from when you have been spinning the yarn. Really good. Uh, the previous episode, the March episode, I was knitting on my husband's Icelander. Uh, it's a free pattern from Rauma and I will put a link. I have been linking on Ravelry in the notes. I have a link to the pattern on Rauma's website. But there will also be a link in my links. I will have a link directly to Rauma if you are interested to find this pattern. And I, I was watching Sam of uh, the Irish Knitter, I think he's, Ita he's Italian living on Ireland and he is, uh, he was watching my episode in March and he was inspired to knit an uh, Icelander for, uh, for him. And uh, yeah, that, that's really good. We, we inspire each other and I finished this one. The pattern is written to, to knit from the bottom up, but I shift 
I switched it. So I started in the neck and I knitted it downwards. So I bind it off at the end of the sleeves. And the yarn is Emma by Permin. And it's 50% um, Merino and 50% uh, Shetland, Shetland yarn. Looks like this. And his, his sweater, he is, he is not wide, he, but he's tall. So it's a, t it's a long, long uh, body and long sleeves and only 390 grams for this full men garment. That's, that's not very much. And actually this, this uh, yarn I was buying when they were selling out. So like 10 Swedish crowns for one of these skeins. And I used up eight skeins for this full garment. So that's like 80 crowns, that not, not even 10 euros. <laughs> so it's a very, very affordable sweater and he is wearing it so, so much. Uh, almost fingering weight yarn. It's, 190 uh, meters in uh, 150 gram skein and uh, yeah Th that's not quite fingering it's 380 meters for 100 grams so it's not fingering but it's almost fingering and he likes the feeling of this thin fabric uh, but still getting all the warmth and 50% merino also gives it softness, so it's it's really really nice, and he's very very happy <laughs> with the sweater, and also perfect for this uh, this spring months. You get uh, not so bulky and uh, big uh, garment, and uh, a thin garment, and also knitted in color work, and. Uh, all giving the warmth so it's perfect really really nice and i'm so happy finally getting around to knitting it for him i got the yarns like five years ago and i was thinking that this would be for christian but now five years later it's finally done and i'm really glad for it so we can put an end to that project but I was really, really inspired by knitting that pattern. It's so repetitive. You knit, uh, I think it's six stitch repeat uh, for, for this uh, pattern. And then you knit that for two rows and then you have two rows with the background color and then it continues like that. So two rows of color work, two rows of the background. And that's really, really, you know, it, it triggers me with uh, like stripes. You just want to knit one more, one more, one more. So it, it was really fun to knit that garment. And I was showing you the previous episode, a big basket of Corydale that was uh, plant dyed with walnut fibers that I wanted to spin. And Corydale silk it was. And I have, I have spun up all that 580 grams. Let's see here if I can grab this. Yes, I did spin up all of that uh, 580 grams of the Corydale walnut colored. So when I had all that yarn spun up and it, it, it became quite thin, I'm, I should say like fingering. And also uh, knitting that sweater and I was thinking perhaps, perhaps this could be fun. Uh, together with my advent spin. Do you remember in December I spun five grams of Rolag every day on my spindle and then I plied it with one uh, white unspun uh, thread and it turned out so so nice. I called it my confetti yarn and I also said and some of you said that that's not for you Kia. Perhaps that will be for your granddaughter. But together with this Corridale and I think you can uh, you can guess now what I have done. <laughs> I have been knitting an uh, Icelander for me with this color in the background and using this as the contrast color. Perfect combination. Perfect combination. 
I will hang this one and then we will look at, at my sweater. Look at this, I'm almost done because this one just gave me, if, if that one with just uh, triggers the stripes in you, this one with the changing of the colors added a new dimension I must say on the on the trigger of just one more row because I wanted to knit for the next color shifting as well. <laughs> so what do you think? Do you like it? We have a Swedish uh, a Swedish singer called Benjamin Ingrosso and he has released a super hit now a couple of months ago called Kite and he says in that song I think I like it honey and I think I like this one as well. All hand spun and using that uh, shiftings of the colors in the garment. And I'm almost done. I have done the full body, one of the sleeves are done and not much. Half of the second sleeve is already done. So not much left <laughs> to knit. And I'm using the same uh, needles as on, uh, on the other one. Uh, 3.5 for the body. And to be honest with you, I have been uh, not only knitting from one end to the other on this confetti yarn because <clears throat> when this one came in the beginning of the first sleeve, if I should have continued with only this, it would have been one blue sleeve and that's not very fun. So I, I took it off and I used it on the beginning of the second sleeve as well. So they are similar in the beginning. Uh, this one also was not my favorite, so I, I just used a little bit of it and then I, I snapped it. I didn't want too much of this pink. And also when I came to, to like the big part, when there were big sections of this yellow, I wasn't too happy either wanting a big choke of that color. And also when we got to the almost white, I also picked it away, so I didn't use all of it. Uh, this is where I am at now, and it is red, green, brown, so it's, it's the best thing when they... Uh, when it's not two long uh, uh, sections of the same color. That, that's, that's fun, at least for the sleeves it's perfect. So I have been uh, messing a little bit with uh, the colors. I can't say I have been just knitting and it came, became what it became. I have been uh, interfering a little bit in it. But it's, it's okay, I think. Uh, I still have some of, of all the colors in it and as you can see here the blue was here with three stripes so I started the second sleeve here also using three stripes and then just moved on to, to the variegated skein. And here, here's a big section of not very much but that's also okay. I think uh, I am just following along now and we started with some red and it also ended down here with red and over to the light blue here. The sleeves they, they ended like yellow so I think I will try to, to do that for this sleeve as well uh, ending it with some yellow because I have both of these two yellow so I can use it at the end of the sleeves. So that's good. So almost finished this, this uh, Icelander for me as well. And something I did different from, from my husband's because I was knitting uh, top down and I just switched around the pattern, started with the neckline. And there were no, no increases after or since, yeah, from the beginning, after the ribbing, there was no increases for the body. They were just, yeah, shifting, shifting needles. So what I did with mine is that I started with the same numbers as on my husband's, but I did uh, uh, some increases, I think like 20 stitches or something, right after the ribbing. So I just got it a little bit wider right away. 
because we are a little bit wider on the top than men are so that that's a, a change I did on my husband's sweater there is no uh, short rows in the pattern if I remember correctly I did on my husband's add on uh, on the back here but it was a little mind twisting doing this because we have uh, one diagonal line also one square and one, one diagonal line and when I was knitting from the back side I couldn't you know it was be getting wrong in my head so I decided on mine let's not do any short rows up here let's just make them after the separation for the sleeves so there is no neck uh, uh, shaping up here but when I put my uh, sleeves on on the wires I decided and this is nothing new I did it as well on this one I knit like six six seven centimeters back and forward on the back piece so I raise it up the yellow was the last one uh, and then I knitted a little bit here like down to here perhaps back and forward and then uh, con connected it together and knitted around again and when we pick up for for the sleeve we pick up also on that part that is going down so I picked up like six seven I don't remember uh, stitches there and then under the sleeve and then we have the front piece coming right after that so I hope you you understand what I mean that after separating for the sleeves I, I add like five six seven centimeters here and then I continue knitting around so that raises the back like this and it's perfect it's really perfect so that, that's the the changes I have done in the pattern adding some extra stitches after the ribbing to get it out a little bit and then uh, adding short rows after separating for for the sleeves and I think this is something that comes from uh, Icelandic patterns since they have the color work yokes they have uh, knitted uh, the back piece like it I think that's where I have uh, picked it up so this one will soon be done as well and it will be like not like confetti but Kia confetti you can call it it's a toned down confetti sweater that I feel comfortable with uh, I showed it to my son and he said no that, that would have been more fun with the white background but with the white background this would what would not have been comfortable for me this is uh, getting the tone that I like so I will feel comfortable wearing this one and that, that's the point I think <laughs> we shall feel comfortable wearing uh, the sweaters we make yeah at first I thought that oh that that's I think I broke the yellow there because oh that's screaming that yellow but when you look at the garment like this it, it's not uh, you don't think that oh the yellow shouldn't have been there it's just a nice pop that makes something happen and Sam of the Irish knitter uh, he had added he knitted uh, uh, I think white and black or something but he added a stripe of a color on the sleeve and that was also a nice detail I must say not uh, this crazy but to, just to add in some kind of personal touch on on the garment that was that was a fun idea so this will be my confetti Icelander so we can be sort of matchy matchy <laughs> almost knitted two garments since I talked to you the last time and uh, yeah when when the projects are fun like that it's not hard to continue and continue it's when they are not so fun this one was also very fun just to uh, to be knitting with the hand spun and seeing also the color changes here on on the hand spun really lovely so yes that is three no two finished garments and uh, one almost finished garment uh, yeah that is what i have been knitting on so i have once again i think i show you this one every time and this one this time i'm <laughs> i hope 
<laughs> that I will put my hands on on this uh, project because it has I think I started it I, I can't even remember now was it in November or something oh it's oops it's a really long long term project but I think it's because I'm not super I have been losing weight and this feels really big but I'm also thinking that when I block it, it will grow lengthwise and perhaps it will pull together a little bit. And, and also thinking about the boxy sweater that is super wide and not so long. So it, it can perhaps be the cropped uh, boxy look of it. But according to pattern, this is uh, the length of the sweater. And I have been knitting both of the sleeves, so they are also done. So what I have to do now is to do some decreases and knit the back and the front separately. So I get a, a sweater that is um, almost drop shoulders, but uh, with a little shaping under, under the sleeves. And the, that, that's it. It's not very much. It's the yoke left. One front and one back. And then do some neck shaping and just sew it together. Knitting it. It's Sabelina. It's a free pattern from Phil Colana. And I am knitting it in Galesk tunnel. The colorway is cinnamon. Looks like this. And it's 50 grams skein and it's 288 meters per 50 grams. So it's uh, light fingering. So it, it will also be a very light garment, not, not a thick one. So this, when, when my Icelander is done, this is the garment that I will knit on. But I have been spinning and I all, all, already showed you the 580 grams of the Corridale silk uh, that I spun up since the last time. And uh, I have also spun up the, the last skein of the advent calendar that I had from my friend Emma. And this one is the fifth. We have five. So I spun up the last one and then I gave them all a little bath. So now I have these five skeins of the advent calendar, 500 grams. And I, I have been uh, not feeling very well since November, December, January. Three months I was really, my head was really crazy. And you can see it <laughs> when I look at, at uh, the thickness of the yarns, you can't perhaps tell, but uh, the first two, the first two here are almost DK and uh, then they get a little bit thinner, but it, it's quite fun to follow. When I look back, I can see that Oh, I, I wasn't feeling very well here. I was really stressed. My brain wasn't working. And now when I sit down and spin, it's like thin, nice yarn again. So our mood goes out into the yarn that we are spinning. And perhaps with the knitting, I'm, I'm not sure. I haven't seen the reflection goes to the knitting. But it definitely goes out in my spinning, absolutely, when I'm not 100% uh, balanced, it goes out to the yarn. But five skeins are done and to be honest they are not my colors, of course. <laughs> so my friend Emma and I, we have decided that we will knit the, the night shift shawl by Andrea Maury again I have been knitting it before and she has also and uh, since these are not my colors I will be making it for her and she decided that uh, this black yarn will be the back background color for this night shift so this is something new that I will be casting on really soon and she said that if I make this one for her I can p 
pick out other hand dyed fibers from her to knit uh, to spin for me in colors that I know that I will love. I could I could keep this one I think this is my palette but I'm not sure if she wants all the five otherwise I could I could make something of this for me that would be nice. Well well this is something that I will be casting on really soon we are going on a weekend trip next weekend and I'm driving so there will not be so much uh, knitting time for me but for Emma it will be a lot but there will be time when we get there to sit, sit and knit and chat and uh, yeah, we will have a nice time. And I want to cast on this shawl for this trip. So that this will be happening really, really soon. And I was also thinking that, uh, no, the connection. <laughs> I was knitting on this one uh, last weekend. We went up for a trip to with my grandchildren and the daughter, the small daughter Elsie, four years, she was sitting in our car and I was knitting on this sweater and the sun was shining and it was sort of glittering and she was so impressed. She said, Grandma, I, I would like something in that kind of glittery yarn. And I didn't, by then I didn't know how much yarn will I have left or something, but when I got home, I was looking through my fiber stash and she loves unicorns and rainbows and all, all the colors and glitters and everything. And I found this one and this is uh, uh, Enhörning, unicorn color and it's also the mythology of heaven, Emma's fiber club, same as this. But this was the last one and I was thinking that no, not for me. It w I thought by then maybe something for Elsie. But I, I'm not sure if she will be using a sweater, but I think like a small blanket, a square blanket or something she would uh, love in this because she loves to build, uh, you know, small koja we call it in Sweden. What do you call it? You know, they put some blankets over and they have small, create small places for themselves with... <laughs> Yeah, koja, uh, shed perhaps you call it. And I think a blanket uh, with these colors would be something that she could use for her all her uh, toys, the dolls, the teddy bears, and uh, I think she would love that. So perhaps some kind of shawl or a small blanket, but first of all to be spinning this one would be really really fun and uh, I think it will be fractal spun like I do with my with my uh, fibers mostly first I was thinking perhaps I could just divide it in two and spin it from end to end but I think it would be two big chunks of the same uh, the same color so I think it will probably be fractal spun I guess so that's going to to my spinning wheel and on my spindles I am also having a project going and uh, look at this fun project <coughs> it's oops it's a sock yarn it is uh, nylon uh, blue face lester nylon it's all of it so let's see here uh, it's. Uh, I have started to spin it on my late. No, not my latest. I I did get into a little bit of buying spindles uh, kick for a while back, and uh, I bought another one from uh, a Swedish maker called Björn Peck, and he is, uh, I should say, the best spindle maker in Sweden. And it's Maserbjörk, we call this uh, lovely wood. Really, really beautiful. Really beautiful. And it spins like a dream, of course. So when I decided to start up this spin, I wanted to try out my new spindle, of course. So half of the white has gone up on uh, this spindle. I can put in a picture of, of uh, his product picture so that's the first uh, that's the first 
spindle and I have also got an older spindle from Björn Peck. So the second half of the white is going up uh, on, on this second Björn Peck. Or the first Björn Peck we could call it because this is my first uh, Björn Peck spindle. And this one he added a little coin under. Not on, on this one I got the previous one. But yes, this is so beautiful and I think this is uh, sherry. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's sherry wood on this. So this is something that I am working on, uh, on my spindles. And as you can see, I have divided the last... It was a kit from Emma. She, she dyed up uh, five colors in a kit. And I have been splitting them in two, so there is grey, black, brown and orange left to spin. And I'm in no hurry, because now comes spring and summer, and I know I will enjoy to sit outside and, and spin this. So, uh, another obsession of mine has been... <coughs> you create new obsessions, don't you? <laughs> You know, I talked about knitting striped socks, they have to be matchy-matchy. I can't do uh, uh, stripey socks if they're not uh, matching, 100%. And my latest obsession is that when I spin like this, I want to have uh, matching spindles. <laughs> so the white goes on Björn Peck's uh, spindles, and the next color will go on another pair, because I have a lot of... Uh, no, not a lot, but I have some pairs now that uh, I can uh, I can use. And uh, in December I ordered new spindles from Eastcraft on Isle of Wight. And I got them this week and it's four months delivery and that's a long time. And I have actually been contacting him first... Uh, after a couple of months and then once again after another month and then I finally got them this week. So they have been a long, a long wait for these spindles and they are Russian spindles with a metallic stift at the top here so they will spin lovely. I have Russian spindles bef since before but they have wooden tops so they don't spin very very well. We can try. I didn't buy uh, any cups together with this because I have a lot of cups and I think we can uh, we can use cups that we already have here. I have some uh, also ceramic you know with clay uh, that we can use as well. So the next uh, when I have spun up that white I will uh, start with this, try out these new spindles, super excited and any color will do but not the orange because that will just not match in my eye and I would like to have it aesthetically pleasing for my eyes so I think the grey will be will be the color for this uh, mahogany red, super beautiful that will be the next uh, spin and I can show you my next pair at the next episode perhaps because I hope that uh, I can spin one color every through between every episode. At it goes quickly when you sit down but you just have to sit down <laughs> and that's, that's the hard part. But this will be fun and I will be knitting striping socks afterwards. My plan from the beginning was to spin for self-striping yarn and I had a plan in my head but I have lost it. it it's, uh, it's uh, I think, at least one year ago since I bought the fiber and since then my head has forgotten what it was thinking <laughs> back then. But I will now just make stripes, stripey socks, really nice. So that's, uh, that's the spindle spinning plans for now.
use uh, supported spindle spinning. I use one of these uh, bags. It's filled with something like uh, peas or rice or whatever. It's, you know, it gets heavy and it lies nicely in your lap. And when you put your bowl in this and put it on your knee, it will stay because if you put it on your knee it's easy that it falls down and goes into the floor but when you have this one laying steady sturdy on the knee and you can make a little uh, hole in the middle and then place your bowl there and you put it in your lap it will stay it will not fall and that's that's just perfect I think so that's a really good idea that I got uh, when I bought one of my spindles from another Swedish maker uh, I think it was earlier this spring like uh, February March or something and uh, they, they uh, included this little bag in, in the in the package and, and I thought this is a really great idea I know I have been using a bigger bowl to put the bowl in just so it won't uh, fall into the ground because it gives marks and uh, I'm not very uh, very afraid that it will break but uh, it, it would be a shame if it uh, if it got you know scratches or marks or something so yeah this is this is a, a little tips for you perhaps you already knew but uh, I think I think it's nice to share when when we come up with new ideas it's nice to share. Uh, I think this is it for today actually. I have no more things on the go and nothing more to share. So I will just sit here in in the greenhouse and spin for a bit now and uh, I hope that you will stay for like 5 minutes or something and uh, Watch me spin a little bit on the supported spindle. I will uh, angle the camera a bit so you can see also the spindle, not only my face. <laughs> you have been watching that for a while now and we can watch perhaps the spindle.